are the assumptions behind IRD? There are four primary assumptions that we take into account. The first is monotonicity. What is monotonicity? Monotonicity simply means that as the trait increases, as the level of the trait increases, the probability of correct responses increases. So as the trait level increases, the probability of the correct response being answered also increase. So we call it as what? We call it as monotonicity. That is the first assumption behind a item response theory. The second assumption is unidimensionality. What do we mean by that? One dominant trait is present. So let's say we do the same example, four persons and four items. One dominant hidden trait is there and that is what? That is the difficulty level of the questions which we have not actually obviously taken into account. If we are not obviously taking into account, we can say, okay, both person A and B, uh, both person two and three are at the same score. Both are equally proficient. But as soon as we take that factor into account and we relate it with the observable outcome, we can say probably person two's score is relatively better than person three's score. The fact that the two items person two did were relatively more difficult. So there is unidimensionality that means one single hidden trait which is much much more important than the other traits. Now uh, if we go on to the mathematical aspect of uh, uh, item response theory when we do the statistical calculation we find out the eigenvalues. Now under the eigenvalue we would see that one of the eigenvalue is extremely way off than the other values. So let's say one is around 1.9, the others are 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. That means that trait which shows an extremely high eigenvalue would be one of the traits which would be representing unidimensionality. The second important assumption behind it. The third important assumption is local independence. Now, local independence, what does that mean? Responses are given to each separate item. Now, responses are given to each separate item and in the test, they are mutually independent. So, this question and this question would be mutually independent. Now, responses would be given to each of those items and we say that these, this is what? This is local independence within the test. There are two different items and both of their responses are independent of one another. This does not have an effect on this. This does not have an effect on this. So let's say again the four items, the same question, the four items that we have taken. Uh, my response for first question could be based on let's say verbal abilities. My response on fourth question could be based on non-verbal abilities. So both of them are locally independent. They are not interdependent that both of them are not employing the same trait that I'm trying to understand, but they have separate items which are mutually independent. So that's the third important criteria or, or the third imp important underlying assumption behind the item response theory. The fourth important characteristic is invariance. What is invariance? Invariance that means we are allowed to estimate uh, the item uh, from any of the position on the item response curve. So it is a sigmoid S-shaped curve that we draw for the item response. We'll come on to the curve in a while. Now, we are allowing to estimate the item parameters from any of these locations. So it could be present on the slope of this curve at any of the place and we can actually get the answer for it. So if the assumptions hold true, if all these four assumptions, the monotonicity, the unidimensionality, local independence, and invariance, all of those hold true. The difference between the observing correct responses uh, and the response between the variations in their latent rate would be understood. And therefore, assumptions of item response theory are important. Now, the next thing is, how do we represent this item response theory? There are various curves. The one important curve is rash, rash model. The second is two parameter model. And the third important one is graded response model. Now, what is the difference? 
two parameter as the name name suggests there are two important parameters so it could be true false right wrong two parameters the three parameter is where we are talking about item parameters which is difficulty differentiation and pseudo guessing if pseudo guessing is removed we can convert a 3 pl into a 2 pl curve then is rash model rash model focuses on just one trait now again what is the difference between the rash model it fits the data to the model however under itr Uh, IRT, which is the item response theory, it fits the model into the data. So it's just vice versa. Under Rash model, we fit data to model. However, under IRT, we fit model to data. 